All right, everybody, good evening. We begin the readout tonight with Beloved. The Pulitzer Prize-winning novel by Nobel laureate Toni Morrison that tells the story of a runaway enslaved woman named Seth who kills her baby daughter to spare the child from a traumatic life in bondage. Widely regarded as Morrison's masterpiece, it's almost impossible to imagine the literary landscape or even high school English class without it. The book, set both in the Reconstruction era and in pre-emancipation flashbacks, recounts the horrors of slavery and its impact on the black psyche. But apparently, for some white parents, the real pain isn't about black people. No, no. The pain is actually about them, their feelings. Back in 2013, one white parent advocated banning Beloved from Virginia schools because it gave her son, then a high school senior, nightmares. That parent appeared in a new ad Monday by the Republican running for governor of Virginia, Glenn Youngkin, who has vowed to ban teaching critical race theory, which is not taught in public schools, only in law schools. But no matter, he wants to ban Beloved, too. Such tactics are one of the many reasons that this is the political race to pay close attention to. It tells you everything you need to know about the Republican playbook leading into next week and next year. Glenn Trumpkin, sorry, I mean Youngkin, is locked in a dead heat with Democrat Terry McAuliffe. Biden is scheduled to stump for McAuliffe in Arlington. Meanwhile, Youngkin is endorsed by Mango Mussolini himself, but acting just moderate enough to try to snag those suburban swing voters that he needs to prevail. The fight for the white suburban vote is happening there, but also throughout the country, even in states like New Jersey, with Republicans trying to seize control based on playing on the delicate feelings of conservative-ish white suburbanites. The tactic is nothing new. The Republicans have simply followed Trump's lead, pouring high-octane gasoline on cultural anxiety over jobs and societal change and weaponizing anything that makes white Christians feel icky, which apparently is a lot, like losing a fair election and not getting to have the president that they wanted, like having to engage in our actual history, because let's face it, this isn't a war against critical race theory. It's a war against facts and knowledge, which is why they want Beloved out along with children's books about Martin Luther King Jr., Ruby Bridges, and Rosa Parks. Ditto on the masks and vaccines because their personal liberty trusts your right to live. This is why we see Republican Governor Kay Ivey of Alabama do a 180 on vaccines, once blaming the unvaccinated for the rise of COVID in her state, only to later order state agencies to fight federal vaccine mandates. And uh, it's why Texas abortion bounty hunter Greg Abbott is now going after trans youth playing sports in schools, triggering cis tears about trans girls kicking a soccer ball in elementary school, despite zero evidence of that being a problem in Texas or frankly anywhere. In the end, it's about throwing the, that let's go Brandon anti-Biden red meat to the base, which brings us back to those fragile white feelings being used to try to win purple states and the suburbs. Remember, Donald Trump lost the election in the suburbs. It's, it's voters, especially women, fled from Trump and his party as their lives were upended by COVID. The Republicans may not want Trump back, but they definitely want his voters. And they know the only thing scarier than Trump back in the White House tormenting them and the rest of us is having to feel badly about anything. Joining me now is Aaron Haynes, editor-at-large for the 19th, Stuart Stevens, senior advisor to the Lincoln Project, and Michelle Goldberg, New York Times columnist. I suspect, Aaron Haynes, my friend, that you have feelings about this idea of banning the book Beloved because it makes not, not the black people who have to go through and relive the trauma of enslavement and post-enslavement and the fact that Setha would rather die than have her, have her child die than be a slave. No, no, no. They, it's the feelings of the white parents that we must ban this book. Your thoughts? Joy, Beloved. <laughs> Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, Beloved is an um, it is an American classic, right? And 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 think about uh, the trauma that that many black students may have felt reading To Kill a Mockingbird, for example, another American classic. It's one of my favorite books. But the reality is, uh, you know, there was a full blown murder in that book and and a near lynching. 
That happened in that book, and yet we certainly regard that as a cherished American classic, not to be challenged in any way. But, you know, lest anybody be confused here, the racial playbook is not limited to the big lie of a rigged election or voter fraud. Race-based appeals to white voters are an increasingly perennial aspect of GOP politics, and it's one, uh, you know, not that the former president, he, he latched onto that. This was not something that Republicans are following, uh, you know, the former president, and it's something that he recognized was an effective uh, tool. It's one that he capitalized on in his elections, one to his success and, and to the other not so much. But even if it didn't work in the presidential level in 2020, uh, it has worked in the past down ballot, which is why it continues to be very much part of the playbook now. Race stokes fear among many white voters, which can be very motivating. It also either works to galvanize or suppress marginalized voters like, uh, you know, bl black and brown and other minority voters, uh, you know, women for sure. So this is exactly why you're seeing Democrats using surrogates to directly appeal to black voters and the party's biggest star power, uh, you know, from President Biden to Vice President Harris, former President Barack Obama. Uh, voting rights champion Stacey Abrams, they've both been in Virginia and New Jersey trying to shore up uh, black voters, even as uh, Glenn Youngkin, uh, mysteriously, even as he is is kind of denouncing Beloved and getting on that bandwagon, is uh, simultaneously kind of trying to tell black voters that Terry McAuliffe is not, is not the candidate for them because he doesn't support uh, HBCUs in the state and, and saying that he would, in fact, do this. So, he, you know, Glenn Youngkin in Virginia is really trying to have it both ways uh, in a race that that is going to be super tight, where we've already seen early voting off the charts in that state, with just a few days to go until the election. Yeah, indeed. And Stuart, you know, talk, talk a little bit about this, because this is, let me, let me actually play a little bit of the Lincoln Project ad as, as we have you here. Here's a little bit of the ad um, that Lincoln Project's running about this race. The choice is stark. Glenn Youngkin is Donald Trump's candidate. Anti-Semitism, racism, denying gay couples the right to marry that ugly Charlottesville hate. Terry McAuliffe believes in a different Virginia, working together, rejecting hate. Which Virginia do you believe in? Don't let Donald Trump win. And, and the Washington Post editorial board went, went, went in on him, saying Youngkin has run what amounts to, in some ways, to a conventional Republican campaign, seeking it once to court white conservatives and swing vote uh, suburban moderates. But he also has indulged and encouraged Republicans who swallowed former uh, President Trump's lie that last year's presidential election was stolen, that American elections are not to be trusted in a moment when democracy itself is under assault. Youngkin chose to dignify a fundamental fiction that is subverting our system rather than stand up squarely for the truth. So he, he, everyone sort of sussed him out as sort of a, 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 a closet Trump, Trumpkin. Um, but what do you make of the way that he's running and the way that Republicans are trying to steal back the suburbs essentially by saying to white parents, you've got to fear books about black people or about white people ever having done anything that wasn't amazing. Yeah, ultimately, this is all about race. And, you know, I wrote a book about this called It Was All a Lie. Race is the original sin of the modern Republican Party. And we used to, as Republicans, admit this and try to change, at least. I mean, Ken Melman went before the NAACP in 2005, chairman of the party, and apologized for the Southern strategy. All that's out the window now. This is really a pretty straight up simple race. Donald Trump lost Virginia by 10 points on November 3rd, 2020. If you didn't vote for Donald Trump in November 3rd, 2020, why would you vote for him on November 2nd, 2021? He's Trump's candidate. And this, this, this whole issue over the only African-American woman to win the Nobel, Peace Prize, Nobel Literature Prize it's just, it embodies all of these things. It's, it's about denying of history, as you were saying. It's about race. Um, and look, what is this about cancel culture? They're trying to cancel our only African-American female Nobel laureate in literature? It, it just shows the complete fraudulent nature of the, the entire Republican ethos now.